Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Is that a new voice you're doing? Uh-huh. It's kind of a NPR Thank you. host, kind of. You need a little bit more of a speech impediment. Thank you. Uh, how, how's it going, Mosh? Pretty good. You sounded kind of sultry, actually. Uh, I don't. I just coughed. Oh, is that what it is? You still have some uh, droplets? Natasha, how are you? I'm good. I just took a COVID test and I was actually kind of hoping that I had it. I know what you mean. Because I wanted to like, just like sit upstairs for like two days and I, have no one talk to me. I, I know what you mean. Did I tell you I saw Damon Wayans on stage the other day? And he has had, uh, he said on stage he's had COVID three times. Mm. The latest being in December. And he goes, I got to say, if you're going to get COVID, this is the one to get. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, I don't want to wait this Omicron. I haven't gotten it. I don't want to wait this Omicron wave out, out and then have some new mutation come that's like, hey, actually, this is the bad mutation. I was like, damn, I could have gotten COVID last month. Maybe we should be like living it up. In Hell yeah, let's live it up. Let's go to a hookah bar. <laughs> I want to go to a crowded hookah bar. I'm just sick of being outside. <laughs> you are yeah like i want to go in i want to go into like a cool I, bar we'll go to a crowded bar let's do it fuck it you want to give up right now you want to call it you want to tap out <laughs> i'm hella down let's tap out tap out on covid uh, we gotta talk to our producer first because she might have something to say about it we can't be exposing her but you know what she's expendable what about our child isn't that more important than our producer she's no expend- offense laura i mean is is our child expendable no, I guess not. But you know what? You know what's what isn't expendable? Dispensing wisdom. I thought maybe we'd read one of these uh, hot write-in uh, advice questions. Okay, what do you got? Got an old uh, Ornagenta over here. How do I tell my mom, a guy, how do I tell a guy my mom will never approve if he's not Jewish? How do I tell my mum? How do I tell my a guy my mum will never approve if he's not Jewish? Any thoughts on that one? I mean, you got to stop living for your family. For if, your mum? If your mum thinks that, you know, you need to be with a Jewish person, that's her problem. That's that her. doesn't have anything to do with you. This is the thing. It's like, listen, all this whole Jewish thing... I get it. It's complicated. We were raised in a way that we're like, you know, you should marry a Jew or whatever. It's complicated to shake off that conditioning. But you're a woman. You got the golden ticket in your vagina. Like, no matter who you marry, that kid's going to pop out and be covered in Jew juice. He's going to be a Jew. So who fucking, for a woman to be living for their mom on the Jew tip, I don't think, it's just like. Wait, so if she marries a Christian... Right. And she has kids. You're saying they're Jewish? They're Jews, baby. What does her husband, what does her new husband think about that? And what if she doesn't Don't believe matter. that they're Jews? Don't matter. If she, well, you think it's about whether she believes they're Jews? Guess who decides that they're Jews? 20, the, 23 and me? The Holy One, blessed be he. Okay. Yeah, that's right. The Grand Conductor. The Lord of Lords. The Host of Hosts. <laughs> All I'm saying is... That if this person, yeah, obviously if she's not Jewish, well, why would she give, what, she doesn't give a shit about marrying a Jew herself if she's not Jewish. But if this person, it's important for her to have a Jewish family, Jewish identity, blah, 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 blah. She has nothing to worry about anyway. The kid will be Jewish. What what does she care? Anyway, here's the real deal. If you're going to date people that aren't Jewish, then you don't tell them that your mom won't approve if they're not Jewish. That's rude. Don't tell them. And probably don't tell them, probably you shouldn't date. I got into this kind of trouble when I was a young man because I was like, when I was young, I was more on that tip. Like I could only marry a Jewish person and then I would tell people that. It's like, and reasonably it hurt their feelings. Like, fuck you. You would tell girls that. Yeah, but in my mind, I was like, well, I'm just kind of musing. I'm not going to end up marrying you anyway. In their mind, I was basically saying like, you're persona non grata. It'll never happen with us. Let's keep dating. It was stupid. I Guys was young. have said that to me. What? 
your persona non grata let's keep dating about judaism or just about your judaism. personality <laughs> oh. judaism. i could see it going either way well, yeah it's rude but it's a young man's thing that you do when you're younger and you think it's just like it's a rude thing to do so don't tell them don't tell the guys either don't date people that you uh, can't bring home to mum, or keep your fucking mum's opinions to yourself don't tell them am i a cuck because oh. I, I converted um I thought you did it out of a desire to raise our child in a Jewish family and to celebrate Shabbat. I did. Then no. Okay, good. Am I, I mean, I never, I'm proud. I never asked you to do that. Not, and by the way, uh, right. I never asked you to do it. I don't think so. I never asked you to do it. And I was, I was DTM. Down to Mary? Down to Mary. Really? Yeah. I loved you enough. I was like, you know what? This whole idea that I'm supposed to have a kid that is, you know, connected in this legal thing that I don't even believe. I'm not even a religious person. I just have this conditioning. It's hard to shake some of that conditioning. It's like, what? why am I living my life based on rules that I don't even apply to myself? Living my romance, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm not a religious person, so why would I allow a religious law to tell me, wh like, where I'm going to end up? Anyway. Does, why this, are we does this mean I can get a Christmas tree? That is about not, honestly, that's about me. I don't want to live in a family with a Christmas. I don't want to. You walk. don't like that kind of beauty. You don't like the smell of evergreen. I don't, I you don't like ambiance and why lighting. Are we bringing, why are we relitigating <laughs> this? It's not that. If it felt uh, relevant. It's just fine. You want a Christmas tree? Get a Christmas tree. No, I'm asking you though. It's repellent to me. Not the Christmas tree. I think the Christmas tree is very nice in, in someone else's house. But the idea of me coming into my home and there's a Christ mass tree. <laughs> The, I just so it, when you see the tree, even if it's decorated like really it's like beautiful, it reminds you of Christ. <laughs> it reminds me that I'm participating. I, we've already talked about this on the podcast. I'm gonna get all this hate mail because we have a lot of hardcore men. Okay, Christians. fine. I'm just saying it, it. It reminds me that I am participating in a ritual that is centered around the birth of Christ. <laughs> it's which is true. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe I still have conditioning. I need to. I have yet to shake off. We have the boughs of holly. You got a Hanukkah bush. How far do you want to push me? I want you to take the body of Christ with me at midnight mass <laughs> <laughs> in my hometown of Rockford, Illinois on Christ oh, mass. Oh, brother. Eve. Okay. All right. Let's. I would, go, I would go to midnight mass with you. It's it's pretty boring and packed. But I like mass, actually. I think Catholic mass midnight is Midnight cool. mass is nice. Yeah. I think, I've never been to a midnight mass, but I've been to a Catholic mass. That shit is like going to a magic show. It's awesome. A lot of pomp. You think? A lot of pomp and circumstance. Yeah. I can see a lot how... Of intoning. I can see how if you were going to live your life as a religious Christian, you would prefer to do the Protestant thing because it's a little more accessible. So week after week after week, you'd want a more accessible message. But as a non-Christian, there's no question the Catholic uh, uh, service is by far the more interesting thing to, to, to see as an observer. Because I don't give a shit about the about the preaching. But they did have like modern Catholic churches where I'm from, like that I'm were felt more like synagogues. No, they weren't all a, in. I'm like trying to get frankincense. <laughs> I'm trying to see that little weird, uh, that little weird, um, like, like Etsy that looking incense ball. Yeah, that Etsy looking incense ball that yeah. looks like a Burning Man uh, installation where they're they plopping it back do and that. forth. That's like midnight mass only. I I've seen it. I really? love that shit. Fra frankincense smelled good too. I went to St. James Catholic School and we had a big Gothic church and we would have to go to services like all the time i like a catholic church but right. i could see how week after week you'd get a little bored because it's just like same ass thing every time you know and then they would have you confess and you never know what to say and you're just like uh -huh. there's just some old man in an old brown box that you're like talking through these like little holes at what oh, that sounds so uncomfortable but also I don't know, kind of cool. You could say anything. It's like our secrets hotline. I, it it was kind of like the secrets hotline, but I never knew what to say. It was like no one explained to you how to do it, you know, and I would just say I didn't have sins and it's also dramatic. Well, speaking of secrets hotlines. Oh, yeah. Let's let's hear a secret. Hello, big fan calling from Australia. I love listening to your podcast. Um, I just thought I'd leave a secret. It's a pretty happy secret, but. Nonetheless, I can't tell anyone that I know what's going on. My partner and I are getting married in a couple of weeks. We're eloping. Um, there'll be none of our friends or family there. 
I, for that reason, didn't really feel like doing anything before the wedding um, because I didn't really want to have a party with my friends and be like, cool, you won't be there, but thanks for coming. But my partner has been acting a little bit suspicious, making up some random plans um, for this weekend, and I've just <laughs> figured out that he's throwing a surprise hens party. So there's that. Um, I don't know how. He's thrown me a few secret things before, and I've always figured them out before they happen. So I'm just going to have to pretend I don't know what's going on. But anyway, that's my secret. I feel much better letting someone know, even if it's just the secrets hotline. Thanks. Bye. I mean, yeah, it is a funny move, like, for a really bad actor to be planning a surprise party. He just started acting super suspicious all of a sudden. What are you doing on Tuesday the 12th? About 4 p.m.? Would you like to go get look at wallpaper selections? You're just like, okay, this is a surprise party. I mean, that's just she should just be happy that she has a... Sounds like she is. I always feel like, you know, you have those friends who like organize like a video book for their husband for their birthday and they're like emailing with all their friends to get you to do a video or do something like so many people do that and like i'm sorry i never do anything like that for you honey oh i it's okay because i don't do anything like that for you either (laughs) you want to know what i love about you tosh Hmm. you've never expected me to nor have i ever expected you to nor have you ever thought about Doing one of these saccharine posts on our like anniversary or on my birthday. People are doing it because they really ex- are expressing themselves. But that's not how we express ourselves. That's true. And I'm that is why we are a good match. This girl, like I put a picture of you. This girl, talented, fierce, special, spark plug of a woman. I wouldn't be who I was, who I am, if it wasn't for bringing you into my life. Oh, it feels... It's been seven years, but it feels like seven days. Honey, I'm so glad to call you wife. I mean, God, vomit. Not for me. Point is, we don't do that kind of stuff, and I like that. Uh, To the last caller, we're so glad you're listening from Australia. One thing that would be respectful, though, the next time you call an American podcast, is to go ahead and Google the phrase, hen's party. (laughs) And do the translation <laughs> for us, because we don't know what you're talking about. Took me a minute. It's a bachelor. It's a bachelorette party. He's planning her bachelorette party. Ew. What? Secret, because they weren't going to do one at all. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, that's cute. I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He seems like a nice guy. Okay. I want to yeah. go to Australia. I want to go do stand up in Australia again. I miss traveling. I want to go to Tokyo. I want to go to Berlin alone. All right. Well, let's play another secret. Um, hello, you two. Uh, I was calling to reveal a secret. My secret is that I'm a 51-year-old child. I play Fortnite. I just heard a podcast where, Moshe, you said you play a lot of Fortnite. I play a lot of Fortnite, and I got to tell you, it's really satisfying to kill 12-year-olds. Um, that's my secret. Oh, I don't know if I should leave my name and number. I guess you don't want to interview me about this dumbass secret. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye. Do you think that, I mean, he was trying to be funny. Uh, by the way, I don't play Fortnite. I play Apex Legends. Fortnite, too much you of it. You do? How often do you play that? I haven't played in months and I miss it, honestly. It was my totally, my completely my pandemic um, relief system. Because I would get together with a group of guys and we, it would be like hanging out with a bunch of friends. And we would just like, play video games i miss it if anybody out there has a uh, extra playstation uh five um hit me up you know go ahead and send it in um uh, but 51 i feel like people are younger now than they used to be for longer in better and in, in bad in good and bad ways he yeah, didn't sound 51 we're all just the same amount of idiot yeah, maybe that's it. We just all gotten dumber. That's kind of cool. <laughs> all right, I'm into that. <laughs> okay, let's hear another secret. Hi, Natasha and Moshe. Um, I have a secret that was inspired by last week's caller who said she reports her friend's ex every time she sees them. So I got reported on Hinge and got banned from it. And I don't 
do anything that would have been reportable. But I saw on Reddit that sometimes men, when they get mad or feel rejected, that they will go in and report women's profiles. And I got to be honest, I was psyched that someone was like that offended by my rejection that they wanted to report me. And I can't figure out who in my dating history has done that. But then the psych wore off because I can't make an account with my phone number anymore. So I had to ask my dad to send me the code. <laughs> um, and so now anytime I try to log in, I, I have a boyfriend now, but when I had to log in, I always had to text my dad. And sometimes if he was like mad at me, he wouldn't send me the verification code. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I'm 25 years old. I shouldn't have to deal with this shit. Bye. <laughs> Wait, having to text your dad for your hinge code though, that's, that's like, that's low. That's pretty low. That's worse than she having did. to call your mom <laughs> and tell her you're dating a non Jew. She definitely sounded hot. Yeah, but you know, it's so funny to me that she was just like, so my behavior is like perfect. So nothing <laughs> I did could it could have been. So I went to a obscure Reddit thread and I was like, that's what it is. It's that it's the patriarchy. It's like, well, could be, but you could be toxic too and not even know it. Yeah, but I bet you I bet you that some guy reported her. But you don't just if you get reported one time from a guy and you get rejected, do they really lock your whole account? I don't know. I'm not on Hinge, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I would be very, very confused if you were on Hinge. Wait, which was, is Hinge like more like we want to just kind of bang? It's for fans of Tony Hinchcliffe to find each other and date. <laughs> Wait, what is Hinge? I don't know. Specifically in what the is Hinge, world? Laura? Is it more like sex based? No, it's like people write things People write things about themselves. And you have to respond to a specific thing. Like if you say my favorite country is Australia. That's a lot of pressure. So you have to be like witty. Oh, Moshe, you'd kill on Hinge. Oh, man. God. You missed your you missed your time. I'm, I you I could be a DJ on Hinge. I got to say that uh, I, I started dating you pre-Tinder. I did OkCupid. You know, I always say you can like geolocate. You can like do carbon dating on your dating life uh, based on what social media dating interfaces you used i used zero you never did ever no oh brother i think a lot of women are like that mm, who are my be. age i think things are changing and it's not even weird anymore you still think it's weird because you're kind of out of touch i don't think it's weird i've never done it and it sounds harrowing but i would do it if i had to sounds i'd rather fun. meet people in person for sure well but maybe not i don't know you know one good thing about it is you kind of weed out all the competition if you got a good profile up there, you got your witty hinge thing. You got yeah. so you can at least like have a date with. But then it's like, how do you know that there's someone you want to talk to for like an hour? Well, I don't you, know. you message back and forth and then you go, this person seems cool. Let's meet up. So simple. I don't want to message back and forth a bunch before I see you in person. Because what if I'm like, uh -uh. I do. That sounds awesome. That way Why? you're like, they're cool. I think they're cool. Yeah, but I feel like my physical attraction would rely I mean, so much on like witnessing someone in the flesh first off. Yeah, but you know. And not having to necessarily spend an hour having a coffee uh, with them. Remember bad dates? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The worst where you're just like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> the minute you sit down, you're like, this isn't good. I got to go. And then you're just all, you're all trying to find a way to get it to make an exit. Oh, remember when you would go on a date with someone and in at so, a certain point you go, oh, I, uh, I hate you. <laughs> that didn't happen to me. N never. Marcia. Oh, I did. I was like, oh my God, I hate you. I hate your guts and I have to stop this. I but hate your guts. Seriously. They say something. Like, oh, you're okay. No. I mean, I got to fucking. Did you still fuck them though? I did have some situations. You did. That I, was guilty. I, I did have some women in my life that. I disliked and I thought I think they disliked me too but we did have a sexual relationship actually okay. one person I broke up with I was like look I don't like you you don't like me I don't think we should continue sleeping together the more you explain your ex-girlfriends the more I think it's I, not an ex-girlfriend I really didn't have much competition <laughs> I mean you had a lot of competition but no, no nothing compares no. to you <laughs> I just mean uh you're lucky you found me I, I agree you're lucky you found me too I, I agree. Well, you, you know what? I am lucky I found you. You know why? Why? Because I love you.
I love you too. 